Hi, I'm Dr. Mohammed Fahim, and uh, today we are going to speak on slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Now, slipped capital femoral epiphysis is also known as adolescent coxa vera. So, it is a hip disorder which is seen in adolescents, which is characterized by a posterior inferior displacement of the capital femoral epiphysis on the metaphysis through the physis. So, this is the definition of a slipped capital femoral epiphysis. This definition is misleading because it is the metaphysis or the femoral neck which moves anteriorly as well as laterally and not the femoral epiphysis that, means, that moves posteriorly and inferiorly. Okay. Now, coming to the epidemiology, the incidence is 0.2 to 10 per 100,000 population it is more common in boys, about 60%, but recent studies have shown a 1 is to 1 incidence between boys and girls. This could be attributed to the increased participation of girls in contact sports. The age of diagnosis is around 13.5 years in boys and around 12 years in girls. This is just about before the onset of menarche. The age at diagnosis is also lesser in children with obesity or endocrine disorders. SCFE is bilateral in about 15 to up to 50% of cases. This is important because we should not miss the opposite side in cases of bilateral involvement. It is also important to know that in bilateral conditions, more often than not, the second side is involved within 18 months of the first side. So a close follow-up till the first 18 months is very necessary even for unilateral cases of SCFE. Coming to the etiology and pathogenesis, it involves both biomechanical factors and biochemical factors. And both of these combine to give us a weakened physis. Firstly, we will talk about the biomechanical factors. So, as we all know that the slip occurs through the physis. So, the mechanical factors are a thinning of the perichondrial ring complex. So, this is a normal phenomenon which happens with age. There is a relative or absolute femoral retroversion as well as there is an increased physial obliquity. These points of relative or absolute femoral retroversion and the increased physial obliquity increase the shear forces. So this increase of shear forces across the physis leads to the slip. If we see the image, we have the perichondrial ring of Lacroix and this acts as a support on either end of the physis. So this perichondrial ring supports the physis on either side and prevents a slip from happening. This perichondrial ring thins out and once it's thinned out, it is unable to bear the stress of a slipping physis. It is also important to know the correct zone of the physis which is involved in SEFE and that zone is the hypertrophic zone of the physis because in the hypertrophic zone, the cartilage, the chondrocytes to the matrix ratio is altered. There is more matrix present in these children compared to the number of chondrocytes. And this is the region through which failure of the physis occurs in SAFE. In the pathoanatomy, in these photomicrographs, we will be able to notice firstly, a, a very thinned out perichondrial ring here and we can also see callus formation in between and that the slip is occurring through the zone of hypertrophy. So in the second radiograph or the photomicrograph, let's first identify the zones that we can see. We have the reserve zone because you can see multiple cells in that region there. The reserve zone we have the zone of proliferation, 
we find out the zone of proliferation because if you see the chondrocytes in that layer, they are stacked one on top of the other. All the way till here is the zone of proliferation. And then we have the zone of hypertrophy. So the difference between the zone of hypertrophy and the next zone, which is the zone of provisional cal calcification, is the amount of calcification. You can see the black color is the calcification. And this layer is the zone of hypertrophy. In the zone of hypertrophy, you see thick, big, large amount, uh, large uh, chondrocytes which are in interspersed. But if you see these chondrocytes, they are not uniformly big. There are a few very small chondrocytes here. There are oblong chondrocytes, and there is a mismatch in the size of these chondrocytes. Also, in the last photomicrograph, we will be able to see that in between the multiple chondrocytes the amount of matrix the amount of matrix is a lot so this much matrix and less number of cells leads to decreased ability to withstand shear forces and these shear forces give us a slip now coming to the endocrine factors or the biochemical reasons or the biochemical pathogenesis it is more common in children at the extreme of age for this disorder that is age less than 10 years or age more than 16 years and if you see children presenting to you with an SEFE have a high suspicion of endocrinopathy. So the endocrinal disorders which are common with SEFE are hypothyroidism and increased growth hormone. Both of these form up to 75% of all the endocrinal disorders that you see. Now what does hypothyroidism and increased growth hormone do? It increases the amount of chondrocytes seen in the hypertrophic layer and since this layer is grown bigger than it is supposed to, it is unable to take the shear stresses. Apart from them, estrogen and testosterone alteration or a mismatch of the amount of estrogen and testosterone can also lead to a weak physis. Now, the estrogen is actually protecting the physis because it reduces the height of the physis and a lesser height of the physis is more stable compared to testosterone which increases the height of the hypertrophic layer. The higher height of the, uh, of the hypertrophic layer makes it less susceptible to the shear or more susceptible to the shear forces which it is going to withstand. Other conditions are panhypopituitarism which could occur due to intracranial tumors and this is going to cause generalized reduction in the amount of all hormones in the body. Also, it is very important to know that renal osteodystrophy which can lead to secondary hyperparathyroidism can also lead to SEFE and the treatment of the secondary hyperparathyroidism itself can reduce the symptoms of SEFE. Other medical conditions and syndromes which we need to keep in mind are the rubinstein thiabi syndrome, Klinefelter syndrome, Down syndrome and medical conditions which we need to keep in mind are prior pelvic irradiation, primary hyperparathyroidism and also a hormone replacement therapy for multiple disorders such as uh, dwarfism for growth hormone, growth hormone for dwarfism. Now uh, this particular figure shows us where the endocrine hormones are working. We have the growth hormone as well as the thyroid hormone working on the zone of maturation and the sex hormones which work on the zone of hypertrophy. Both of these regions combinedly form the hypertrophic zone of the physis and this is where, this is the zone which fails in slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Now coming to the direction of displacement, we can classify SEFE based on the direction of displacement. So we know that the failure in SEFE develops through the growth plate and the direction of deformity or the direction of displacement could be on a varus displacement where the head is posterior inferior and the distal fragment is in varus extension and external rotation. Whereas the less common variety is the valgus displacement or the valgus SEFE. Here, the head is antero superior, whereas the distal fragment is in valgus flexion and external rotation. 
for the sake of simplicity, I will not be discussing on the valgus SCFE in this topic henceforth. So this particular topic, we will be only talking about the more common varus SCFE. Now coming to the clinical features and the classification, because both of these are going to be discussed together. We have different classifications for SCFE. And the first one we are going to discuss is the traditional classification, which is based on the onset of the symptoms. So this classification has four classes, the pre-slip, the acute slip, the chronic slip, 